Hi everyone, I'm Tim Spector from the Zoe Health Study with all the latest updates. I'll be looking at COVID rates, explaining why they've stopped going down, as well as why colds and flu are looking up at the moment. And we're going to have some interesting insights from our big IF study on gut health, particularly bloating and what your bowel movements might reveal about your health. Finally, I'm going to share an opportunity for you to become an owner in Zoe and buy shares in the company. But let's first, let's dive in and start on an update on the intermittent fasting. So amazingly, 130,000 of you have now joined the Big If study and 26,000 have extended this beyond the two weeks. And we'd love you guys to keep going for as long as possible to give us even more uh, long-term data. Now, last week we saw you really doing well at keeping with the 10 hour eating window. Uh, that's really good and keep it up. But um, if you don't do it every day, it's not a, a problem. You don't have to give up completely. We want to see how it works in uh, normal day life. Uh, you still chance to join in if you haven't done so already. So once we've gathered all these surveys in, uh, we'll give you all these insights and share them with you. Now, one other thing that many of you are interested in is uh, your general gut health. And we saw that 55% uh, of people uh, go to the toilet, have a poo once a day, followed by 32% uh, twice a day. Uh, and almost 10% uh, of you are real regulars, they're three times a day. Um, but on the other end of the scale, there's about uh, a, a few of you um, going five times a day. But again, uh, also many people just going uh, once a week. So what really is healthy? And uh, studies have shown that we tend to poop between three times a day and three times a week. So anything within that is pretty much healthy because um, it, it may be individualized. And remember the blue poop challenge we ran last year? Well, uh, that was measuring transit time. And uh, in the UK, that average was around uh, 28 hours, I, I think. Uh, it does vary between different countries. Um, and if you go to the loo very frequently, uh, more than four times a day, or if it's feeling uncomfortable, do speak to your doctor. Um, it might be something else going on. As part of the poo analysis, we also ask you to fill in details of the Bristol stool chart. You might remember that, it's a series of gory images uh, looking at the different types of poo um, from you know, runny to rabbit droppings. Um, and this has been used for years. We think there's a better way of doing it, but at the moment, this is the, the classic one. Um, and we found that 62% of you but if fall in the normal range of what your stools look like. So that's reassuring. Uh, and 22% experiencing diarrhea, 16% constipation. But most of you are fine. Um, so if your poo is looking like rabbit droppings, so there's lots of cracks in it, you might be dehydrated. Uh, so you should drink more water. This happens to me when I travel quite a lot. Um, and these sort of types are associated with constipation. Uh, it can also, it's quite likely you're not eating enough fibre because most people in this country are not eating enough fibre and you should uh, increase those intake and don't forget things like nuts, beans, fresh fruits and vegetables uh, are all useless source of fibre as is uh, even things like coffee. If your poo is much looser, more liquid on a frequent basis, this might indicate you've got problems in your gut such as, uh, you know, uh, some gut health, the balance of your good and bad microbes isn't right, or you could even have uh, some infection. Um, but in general, the same of, of, of price advice, increasing your fiber intake slowly can help to regulate this. Many people find if you overdo it too quickly, it, it can be counterproductive. Um, hormones can also affect your uh, poop frequency. Uh, we found that high progesterone in pregnancy and before periods do slow down your gut motility making you a bit more constipated um, exercise and movement also uh, 
can help things moving along, along with, as we said, uh, keeping hydrated. Now, we looked at your typical diet and noticed that those of you who do have a high intake of fiber in your diet tend to <clears throat> poo more frequently and experience less constipation. So there's a clear association that uh, is uh, underpinning all this. Now, it's really important to remember that even if you're taking part in the big if study, the fasting study, you still need to drink plenty of water. Um, it doesn't break your fast, uh, nor does black tea or black coffee. Um, a really exciting finding for the data was that taking part for, in this fasting for two weeks, the majority of you experienced less bloating. And you can see on this uh, graph here that everything to the left side um, experienced an improvement and vast majority of people improved, only a few of you uh, got worse. So that is a potentially positive thing that uh, changing the, your timings of your meals, giving your gut more of a rest could uh, influence some of those symptoms you thought were uh, permanent. Uh, we'll find out more about this and feedback to you. Okay, so back to good old COVID. Um, on the numbers, they've stopped falling for the first time in weeks uh, and just starting to creep back up, which is really annoying. We're now over 150,000 estimated cases, which is up uh, just about three and a half percent from two weeks ago. So nothing dramatic, um, you know, no big surges, but it's certainly not looking like it's going to go down. Um, and one in 32 people at the moment have COVID and the R rate is flat at one. Looking at the age range graph, you can see that um, most of the older groups are leveling off pretty flat. And uh, children, although they were dipping the last uh, few days, seem to be flat again. Um, and across the country, sharpest increase we've seen is in the West Midlands. Uh, but otherwise other areas are pretty similar. Uh, do keep giving us these symptoms, really important. Uh, we note what's going on, particularly uh, in the build up to Christmas and uh, the fact that many people are meeting together after a long time apart. And of course, we've had big shopping sprees with Black Friday and uh, people getting together for, to watch the World Cup, etc. So. Um, I think cases are likely to, to increase, uh, but still we, we think nothing major until the new year. Now, uh, colds. Now, in comparison to COVID, we're seeing a massive increase in uh, the uh, reports of colds. You can see this is nearly back to uh, one of our peak levels and it's still going up. Uh, lots of it around the moment. Main driver is the RSV virus, respiratory syncytial virus, uh, very high. Um, and it, this is mainly driven through kids and babies are getting it under the age of four. Um, and there are uh, some, uh, a few, uh, most people that are susceptible to it. Now, I think the flu data here is also interesting for the first time for a long time, we're starting to see significant increases in flu. And uh, we're now at about one in six people in some age categories um, have been detected as having the virus. It doesn't mean they're getting the symptoms. It doesn't mean they're severely ill, but there's, it means there's quite a lot of it around. Uh, so do remember to get your flu jab if you haven't yet. Um, it looks like it is going to hit this, this year. Um, do protect vulnerable people around you as well. So I'm going to now go talk about own Zoe and I finish up on something exciting. Um, if you've signed up to our mailing lists, uh, look in your inbox this week for an, an opportunity for our loyal contributors uh, who've been really with us for years to share in the success of Zoe. We're offering you a chance to invest in the company and help scientific research. Uh, help us expand that to people all over the world. Um, and it is a great opportunity, but absolutely um, is totally discretionary. And uh, only if you, you feel like you uh, want to get involved, but it'd be love to uh, have you as partners uh, in this, include you in, 
the link in below if you're interested in getting involved. Now, in conclusion, COVID is slowly increasing. Uh, colds and uh, respiratory infections and flu are going up and staying high. COVID is likely to in increase a little bit in the next few weeks. Um, and it's certainly, you know, we've got reasonably high rates at around one in, one in 32. I don't see another big peak until next year, but uh, it's only as good as the last data point you gave us. So do keep um, giving us this. Um, the weekend in London was absolutely full. I was out there signing books and I could hardly move uh, in London for Black Friday um, to see how this affects um, rates in the next few weeks. In terms of uh, dominant strains, um, still a bit of a battle going on to see who's going to take over from BA5. Um, we've got a few contenders in there, BQ1, XBB1, uh, which is really big in Singapore. Uh, and there's other ones, even coming back to old, our old friend BA2. Um, it's got some other ones and something called BJ1. So they're all fighting for dominance. And while they're still fighting, it's probably good news for us. There isn't one that's managed to get around our immune systems. Um, do keep an eye on your, uh, your stools and your frequency to monitor your gut health. Um, Drinking water, getting more fiber in are a real key if you're if you everything looks like rabbit poo. Uh, if you'd like to get involved uh, to the big if study, you can still do that. Uh, looks like it might help with symptoms like bloating, as many of our contributors reported. Be good to get more confirmation of that. And uh, finally, again, as I said, if you want to uh, get involved in owning uh, Zoe and getting some shares, uh, look below. Um, you can do it even for a tiny amount of money. Um, please remember to like and subscribe our channel and share the app with friends and family and support science and keep logging. Thanks again. Bye.